Okay, we're up to the fifth aliyah from Parsha Sekev. Devarim, verse Yod Bet, verse 12, from the Book of Deuteronomy, as it's known, chapter 10. And now, O Lord, O Israel, what does the Lord your God demand of you? Only to fear the Lord your God, walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to worship the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. So this is like from the, from the Shema. To keep his commandments of the Lord and his statutes of which I command for you this day for your good. And it's not just that day that he commanded you, it's for all time. Behold, to the Lord your God belong the heavens and the earth. Wait, belong the heavens and the heavens of the heavens, the earth and all that is on it. Only your forefathers the Lord desired to love them. And he chose their seed after, after them. You, out of all peoples, as it is this day, you shall not, you shall circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Therefore, be no more stiff-necked. So your heart has like, also has an orla, has like this covering. It's called an orlot. Yes, it's of your heart. Your hearts. It's really of your hearts. It's interesting. It says your hearts. I think this is like the this is where they get the idea that there's a Yitzhara and a Yitzhar Tov, or there's like a Neshama. For the Lord your God is a God of gods, and the Lord of the Lords, a great, the great, mighty, and awesome God, who will show no favor, nor will he take a bribe. He has, executes the judgment of the orphan and the widow, and he loves the stranger to give him bread and clothing. You shall love the stranger for your strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, worship him, and cleave to him, and bear by his name. He is your praise, and he is your God. Who did these great and awesome things for you, which your eyes have seen? Not, this isn't something that is like some theoretical thing. This is something you saw. We actually saw it. And our Masora tells us that it was public. We saw all these great and mighty wonders in public. And you say, well, I wasn't there. I'm born in like 1973. And like, I wasn't there. That happened like three and a half thousand years ago. No, God says you were, the, I was actually there. My name is a Neshama. I was there. And even if I wasn't there physically, I was there spiritually because my great, 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 great ancestor was there. And that person, those people taught every single generation, door, la, door, la, door, until I received this Masora. Even though I wasn't literally there, like in person, I was, you know, because it happened in public. With 70 souls, your forefathers descended to Egypt, and now the Lord your God has made you as the stars of heaven and in abundance. So that's one of the things we read in Pesach. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God. Keep his charge, his statue, his ordinances, and his commandments all these days. So again, it has like this division of three. It lists them like Hukim are mentioned before Mishpatim, and then it's and then there's this thing called Mitzvot. What are those differ? How are those different than a Huka and a Mitzvot? I thought those are the Mitzvot. Okay, again, this is something interesting. And you shall know this day that I speak not with not with your children who do not know and who do not see the chast chastisement of the Lord your God, His greatness, His mighty hand, and His outstretched arm. They did not see it. And you shall know this day that I speak not with your children who do not know, who did not know, and who did not see see the Lord, you know, the chastisement, what happened on Harsinai, your the Lord your God, his greatness, his might, mighty hand, and his Azra Sharm, his signs, his deeds, which were performed in the midst of Paro in Egypt, to, to Paro, king of Egypt, and, and uh, as a child, like, even though they didn't see it, because it happened before they were born. What he did to before I even before I was born, you know, for you know, nobody in the last two and a half, nobody has seen that. It was like a one-time event. And what he did in the army of Egypt to, to his steed and to his chariots, and he caused the waters of the Red Sea to inundate them when, when he they pursued you, and the Lord destroyed them to this to this day, even though that only happened once, and what he did for you in the desert until you arrived at this place, and what he did to the did to Dothan and Abraham, the sons of Eliab, the sons of Reuben, that, that the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed them up, and their households and their tents and all their possessions and all, at their feet and in the midst of all of, all of Israel. That was a one time event, even though you weren't there when it happened, but your eyes, which have seen the great work of the Lord, which, which he did. He, therefore, 
wait, it says we didn't, but now it says your eyes, which have seen the great work of the Lord. So all the things that, all the things that, even though you weren't there 38 years, when all those things happened, and you know, you know, we haven't been there, like I wasn't there when all those things happened. Keep all the commandments that I command you in this day, order that you might be strong and come possess the land in which you are crossing to possess it. So even if you weren't there, doesn't matter. You weren't. That doesn't matter. You were born yesterday. You were born 30 years ago. You were born a thousand years ago. You were born, you know, in the time of the Mishnah and the Talmud, or you know, doesn't matter if you didn't actually see it physically. Even if you didn't physically, you weren't in Egypt. Those things happened. Those things really happened, and 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 because those things really happened, you keep you keep the mitzvot and you get to possess the Eretz Israel. But there was also the promise. Also, before we saw the earlier verses that there was a promise to Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. But even that isn't enough. Like, right, so there's two things. There's like the promise that Yitzhak, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, which is like, like one of the strongest anchors for why we have Eretz Yisrael. And the second strongest anchor, maybe like A1, so there's A, and then there's like A1. So like A1 or slightly just under that is keeping the actual mitzvot themselves because we don't keep the mitzvot, we don't keep the ornaments, we lose Eretz Yisrael, even with the promise because we were kicked out of Eretz Yisrael for 2,000 years. Okay. In order that you may prolong your days of the land of the Lord, swore to your forefathers to give to them, and that there is uh, to their seed a land flowing of milk and honey. Okay, 